Hello, welcome to Dunces and Dragons. I'm your Dungeon Master, Ed. I'm joined, as always, by Peter, who is playing Snorri Whitebeard. Howdy. Ben, who is playing Grimar Stone Shield. Hello. Uh, Dave, who's playing Kavir, the Tiefling Rogue. And Reese, who is playing Drake, the Dwarf Warlock. And mm. not pictured right now because he's eating again, is Topper, who is playing uh, my foreskin tugger, the gnome of many classes. <laughs> <laughs> who, who uh, by the way, loves an omelet. I, I miss omelets. I do miss omelets. So, when last we saw our heroes, they were exploring the uh, secret underground dungeon beneath the Durst family house. Uh, and they had just defended themselves from a chest that had tried to eat a member of their party. I knew someone um, that once. Uh, and the last thing that happened is Grimar fell down a spike pit and got impaled. It's a shame that possessed little girl inside of his head didn't warn him about that. He didn't there ask. Bit, there is a bit of a thought. <laughs> Fair point. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're a little quiet. Unfortunately. I was just saying, there's a, there is a bit of a thing now that you think Grimar might get. <laughs> well, the way, yeah, that is true. The broom, uh, the possessed girl, the pit. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to ask this girl some questions, actually. Okay. So, so, so Krymar is standing, like, shoulders out of a spike pit, bleeding profusely. Okay, uh, what well, questions she's... do you ask the girl who lives questions. inside his head? Yeah. Jeez, how much pain are you in? Um... <laughs> He's incentivized to talk, is what you're saying. <laughs> so, when was the last time you saw your parents? And were they alive? <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, how are you going to how are you going to role play this one? <laughs> well, uh, uh, so she's uh, she's in Grimar's head. So Grimar can hear the res response to this, but Kavir right, can't. Okay. So if he's asking a question to Grimar, meant for the girl, then there's going to have to be some, uh, you know, game of telephone, man in the middle thing going on here. Um, uh, oh, I can't wait don't, for this. Why don't you type it, and then Ben can read it? That's a good point. Yeah, you could whisper it to Ben. You could whisper it to Ben, and I could. I could We're basically out like the gaps. speeding things up now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I can't be bothered with that. Uh, <laughs> Grandma, you hear her say that um, she do she doesn't know how long it's been. Yeah. But I mean, judging from the state of the house, you guess it's been a long time. She doesn't know Kavir. It's been a long time. As you can tell by the state of the house. Now help me up. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe she's actually in control of him. Maybe in control of who? Me? Hang on a minute, Rose. I'm talking to the others. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good point. Uh, how do we know that? <laughs> you that don't is know, do we? we don't know that's going on. No. Well, if someone who knows me well asks me a question that only he would know the answer to. What was Grimar's favourite toy when he was growing up? You. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so wrong. <laughs> you know <what> I, mean? <laughs> I refute that. <laughs> uh, we got to try and get him out of this pit then. Yeah, I'm not no, sure. He can get we can himself him out. out. He's seven foot tall. Yeah, but well, like, at the end of last session, we'd, we'd, I'd got myself out. Yeah. It's basically, yeah. yeah it's, it's just a case of like putting my arms up, lifting myself up and out, mm. um, and then we've taken a short rest. Yeah, um, especially for a Goliath, it's not a deep pit. It's just that it's coated with spikes. Yeah, it's like stab spikes. Shall I check, spikes. Shall so, I check yeah. the traps? Damage. Check the traps. <laughs> 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 I think the moment has passed. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we're going to continue. Yeah, so can you tell me which, which way you guys want to go? Um, 
I'll carry on the way I was heading, which was down this way. Are you still going first? Well, I guess so. Well done. Well, I think we've all done the card, aren't we? So, so we I mean, just, just change. Just watch out for the hole in the floor. You'll be all right. Yeah, I'm sure we can all like jump over it, right? Yeah, you don't need to roll to jump over a five foot gap. My fault. Do you need me to um, lift you over it? You're gonna be all right. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. I always like the idea of being in the arms of a big strong man. <laughs> okay. So I, I lift, I lift my four over delicately. Okay. Caringly, because I, as I noticed, as I noticed, you, you referred to me as a friend, which I, was actually very touching. And don't, watching back, yeah. So. Don't throw me, because nobody tosses a no. Hey. Is that <laughs> is that the um, the motto of your sex toy company? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Right, so we should carry on. Yeah, so you, you want you guys want to head down these stairs? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna move Grimar down and you guys can move yourselves into the same hallway. Okay. Uh, so if you guys scroll down a little bit, you'll see the new area. You've gone down a level. Where do you want us to be? Behind him on that stairs? Anywhere in that corridor, it's fine. Whichever marching order you feel is appropriate. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have we have got a bit of com- we have been we've been a bit sensible with our walking now. We want strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. But based on Grimar only having nine life nine hit points left, I suggest that he doesn't go at the front anymore. I suggest that we put the next strongest person, which is um, <laughs> oh Snorri. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So you come out into a. Uh, reliquary. Um, it's, this room has lots of little niches carved into the walls, uh, each holding some manner of strange object. Um, as soon as you arrive down here, uh, you can tell that the the chanting that you've been hearing constantly uh, while you've been in this lower level dungeon of the house uh, is getting louder. So you, whatever the ch- wherever that chanting is coming from, you're you're getting very close now. Um, you can hear for the first time. You can discern what the voices are saying. There's about a dozen or so voices, um, and they are chanting, uh, <clears throat> "He is our savior. He will free us." Sorry, Dungeon Master. How are they saying it? Can you do? Can you get? Can you take us there? <laughs> what can I do? A dozen voices simultaneously. Well, just what just what'll do. Uh, yeah, they're saying he is ancient. He is the land. He will free us. He will set us free. Praise be to him. I've I've literally got goosebumps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, check for traps. Yeah. Give me uh, an investigation. <clears throat> um. Come on, Grandad. You gotta press the button, Grandad. That, while you're doing that, I'm going to describe some of the objects so you can see in these little alcoves in the walls. Uh, you can see a small mummified yellow hand with sharp claws uh, attached to a loop of rope, like a soap on the rope. Uh, you can see a knife that appears to be carved from bone, uh, a dagger with a rat skull set into the pommel. Um, you can see a desiccated frog lashed to a stick, and other such grisly trophies. Okay. Uh, with an 18... Um, Can I just add, Ed, as, as I go around a tapping and a poking, anything that looks vaguely valuable, just give me a special, you know, because it might, you know, fall into... Oh, I'll just whisper it so the, the rest of the party don't know that you found <laughs> it. Just don't, don't, don't touch anything, Dave. Please. I'm tapping and a poking, that's the way I roll. Dave, you eating? <laughs> <laughs> so has he has, has he found any traps? Um I'm just having a look now. Oh, I've just closed roll twenty, so that's useful. Um yeah, no, he hasn't. Aren't we? <laughs> oh, consummate. 
Uh, no, no he, he had it doesn't he doesn't detect any traps where he is. Um, can I, can I with, an eight, with an 18 investigation, I'll tell you that this uh, hallway here that I'm marking is where you think the source of the um, the chanting is coming from. Sorry, could you do that again, Eddie? Because I was looking at the other screen. It's the, the hallway that Snorri is now looking through. Suggest we be very, very quiet. Be very, very quiet. Um, as you look f down that corridor, uh, you can see that it leads t slightly slopes down into a uh, partially submerged chamber with a dais in it uh, and some sort of altar on the dais. Um, at, but barring your way into the room is a rusty iron portcullis. Do we want to do a little bit of a detect magic spell or are we just going to do a bit more investigation to see if we can find a way to move this gate? Um, how should I do, should I do investigation first? Let, let, yeah, but let's check the other end as <clears throat> well in case anybody comes up behind us. Yeah, so the one to the next door to it. So what are you doing, sorry? Uh, you want to look down there? Uh, yeah, because I don't want anybody... Uh, do you remember what happened with the ghosty dude and the big lumpy thing? <laughs> let's not have that again. <laughs> Uh, right, well, well you, you're pretty confident there's no traps down there because you've already inspected it. So if you want to move your token and have a, a peek around, you're free to. Bruce, is that you at back 2222? 22, 22? Okay. Uh, yes, that's me. Coming. I understand what you're doing, but we need to be a bit smarter, Dave. You shouldn't be doing this because you've only got eight of life. If you get attacked by a broomstick or a hoover or a microwave, you're dead. I'll go. We'll anything anything that we have met in this campaign would kill me in one hit. I, 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 I've already, already realised that. That's why when Peter's not here, we have to send Snorri. You're, you two have gone down there and we're going to stay back here. Is that the plan? Well, I'm just following him Kifnir so he doesn't kill himself. So you're worried about, you're worried about his like morale. He's going to save his ass. So, <laughs> yeah, you you look down this area um, without getting closer. Uh, what you can see is that there are lots of individual cells on uh, both left and right hand side of this corridor. Um, and the couple that you can see in from your current position have rusty iron manacles attached to the wall, much like the ones that you were uh, trapped in not an hour ago. Uh, at the very far end of the hall, here where I'm pinging, uh, there is a skeleton. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not marked. It is not. Um, sorry, attached to chains on the wall. Uh, it but is clearly a skeleton, skeletal figure wearing tattered black robes, just sort of slump, slunched over. So is is it hanging together like <laughs> it's, it's collapsed, or does it look like a like an actual animated thing? which just doesn't happen to be moving. It's just a pile, like a. Yeah, it's like it's collapsed. It's like sort of in a fetal position. Oh, um, do you know what? I Any other time, I disregard no. this skeleton and move on. But based no. on what we've been attacked by so far... I think you probably stand up and start attacking us from behind. I think... No, I think we're best off going into this main room with the water, seeing what's going on. And then, I agree. Like, yeah, we'll do. Let's do it. Yeah. There's no point in splitting the party or whatever else. Focus on this. This room seems important. If it's if it's got like you know this sort of dice, then sort of thing in the middle. Well, to be honest this, with you, we we don't know if we're going to get the port colours open, do we? The gate. I mean, we how, still don't know what it is. Yeah. Well, I mean. With the with the portcullis said, is it you, you say it's rusted? How badly rusted is it? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> it's pretty badly rusted, but still looks very sturdy. It's not, you know, like it's not like a swift kick would do for it. Um, but maybe someone of your strength might be able to do something about it. Would I be able to say lift 
lift it. Try at least try and lift it. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, do potentially. That way. Yeah. So, if I roll, is it strength check? In which roll? Yeah, give me a. Uh, I think it's strength. Uh, athletics, if you have athletics. any further training in that. Yeah. Oh, good one. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, with that, you're you're able to brace yourself and lift it up. Um, whatever mechanism controls its raising and lowering uh, is apparently weakened enough by age that you are able to get this over your head. But you get the impression as you're holding it uh, that as soon as you let go, it's going to slam back down. So you, you're you going to have to remain here while your your teammates pass you. Okay, so we can make our way into that room. Yeah, if you wish. So we'll move Snorri in first. Then I'll go... Do you want me to move you two? Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll put Drake there and Kavir there. And now can we move Ben... Now can we move uh, Ben through? Yep. Yeah. Ben. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so... The chanting has been getting steadily loud, louder and louder as you've progressed through the dungeon. Uh, as you enter this room, suddenly it stops, like someone has pressed pause. Um, you are in a large 40-foot square room with smooth masonry walls providing excellent uh, acoustics. You can hear every sound bouncing off uh, the, the walls around you. Um, Featureless stone pillars support the ceiling, and a branch, a breach in the west wall, which, to from the perspective of this, is the very bottom of, uh, of your screen. Um, a breach in the west wall leads into a dark cave heaped with refuse. Murky water covers most of the floor, and stairs lead up to dry stone ledge on the on both sides of the chamber uh, that hug the walls. In the middle of the room. Uh, more stairs rise to form an octagonal dais that also rises above the water. Rusty chains of shackles dangle from the ceiling directly above a stone altar mounted on the dais. The altar is carved with hideous depictions of gaping ghouls and is clearly stayed with centuries-old dry blood. So that seems to be some kind of sacrificial altar. Yeah, but what's, the, what's so, the water doing in there? Is the water meant to be in there, or has it sprung a leak? It does look a lot like my mother-in-law's house. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to do an investigation on it, just to see what's if we can find anything untoward. I'm on the right page. Um, investigation. Oh no, stop me. Boom. Great. <laughs> Nailed that. Um, no, nothing that I haven't already uh, explained to you in the room's description. We, uh, if we're all going to sort of like have a little look around, can we all try an investigation as we're all sort of like maybe wandering around the room? Oh. Yeah, if, if you guys want to do, um, if you all want to investigate an area when you enter it, we'll do group investigations just because it's, uh, okay. it seems more, I don't know, more gamey to me. Um, yeah. So whoever whoever in your party has the best investigation can roll with advantage um, as he's being assisted by the other members of the group. Well, I'll tell you what, before we do that, okay, no, roll your dice. No. Before we do that, I would use one of my portent dice. Okay. I had a 17 and a 3. 5? 17 yeah. and a 5, I had. So you want to use your 17? I use my 17 portent with my 6 modifier, which gives us a total score of 23. Nice. Okay. Uh... You remember what my portent is, don't you? In between each rest, I get two dice that I can replace. So now I've used up my 17, I've now got five remaining. So yeah, if well, I get a five or something, I can use that. If it gets a 20, I can replace it with a five. Okay, uh, you, first of all, you detect no traps or anything of that sort. Uh, you do notice that one of the walls is false. 
Uh, I've marked on your yeah, screen there. Um, <clears throat> so casting your eye around the room, uh, you can see a very faint indentation in the wall uh, where dust has collected in an unusual manner, uh, as if there was a slight breeze there disturbing the, the track of grime and dust as it's built up over the however many years this place has lain uh, without interruption. Um, and so you, you estimate that that point of the wall, you could potentially exit to the other corridor that you saw from the previous room. Um, other than that, you detect nothing peculiar about the room, save for the breach in the wall at the very south of your map. Um, in there, there is a pile of uh, random junk, basically garbage, trash. Um, however, Without getting too close, you assess that there is also uh, bones, pieces of rotting flesh, uh, and there is a smell emanating from it, as well as a slow and labored, but very quiet and gentle breathing. Something is in there, uh, and based on the rhythmic nature of the breathing, you think it might be asleep. Right, before we go any further, I need to ask two questions. One, is the chanting still going on? No, the chanting has completely stopped the moment you guys entered this room. Right. And second question, I can't remember, it'll come back to me in a minute. Right, what are we going to do, team? Oh, if we've got a good, a good idea of where in the rubble it might be, or, or, or a fair indication, um, if we can see any of it, then Myself and Snorri can put bolts and arrows into it. But it might be a... Ah, that was my other question. Can we ask um, Grimar's body double, <laughs> or the little girl, if she's ever been down here before and she has any idea what's sleeping there? Okay. So if, if, if my four... Uh, so, <clears throat> Grimar, you've constantly had this, like second inner monologue in your head as you've been going through these dungeons, right? Yeah. Uh, the the sound of Rose nattering in your ear and kind of thoughts unbidden, just like she can't have a filter on it. Um, you notice all of a sudden that uh, her voice went silent the moment you entered this room. But when my four articulates that question to you, um, you hear that voice again say, uh, I think that I think that might be my brother. Okay. She thinks it might be her brother. As in this is Thorn? Is it? No. She it's says no. brother. Thorn Thorn's back in our bedroom. That's, I think that might be baby Walter. Okay. Uh, but she, you, can, you can tell from the tone of her voice, she's clearly terrified of whatever is there. Okay, we well, found, is. Didn't we find a dead, a dead baby? No, you found a bundle of, of cloth that was inside a crib and looked suspiciously baby-like. Okay, so... That pile... Fireball... No, I think what lot. we can do... Listen, I can use Mage Hand to give it a little prod. See what's occurring. Well, we know what's occurring. Well, no, but I might wake it up. I could probably wake it up, can't I? Well, no. There's no I mean, harm in trying it. It doesn't cost anything to do it. Yeah, but it doesn't cost anything to surprise attack something. <laughs> but it might be friendly. Um, I don't think if so. <laughs> if, it's terrified, if it's terrified her that much, I don't think. It's gonna be anything okay. friendly. This is a this is a democracy, not a dictatorship. So um, the, the, the populace have spoken. So I'm gonna use Mage Hand to prod it. <laughs> 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 no, we'll go with we'll go with those two. They want to shoot at it. Okay, so yeah, who who does what? Uh, it, can I actually see an identity? What I what what would be an identifiable bit of a thing sleeping under there, or can I can I only see a pile of rubbish? If you see what I mean. So it's pretty dark in here. Um, you Could do I have dark vision. 
Um, but the the pile is kind of indistinguishable trash. And like I say, like there's bones, there's pieces of rotting meat, there's uh, like discarded clothes, things like that. Um, now that someone has mentioned that there's breathing coming from there, you think uh, it, it does actually kind of resemble a nest. Um, but you can't you can't determine any shapes within it that that indicate an, its inhabitant. So between Topper Reese, who's got some kind of magic? Well, we both have mage hand. That's we yeah, we, but that. not something which is going to do damage. Fireball, fireball, fireball. I have burning hands, okay. which will just burn the place down. Right, I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'm going to unleash a firebolt out of here. Yeah, do that. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, roll an attack with advantage, because this pile isn't trying to dodge you or anything. So how do I do that, sorry? Uh, at the top of your character sheet, there should be toggles to say advantage, disadvantage. So do, it again, do what I just did, but do it again with advantage. Uh, no, you, so you have to make a ranged spell attack. Oh, right. Sorry. 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 <laughs> I'm still learning. It's all right. Um, right. Make sure that's on advantage. And then ranged. Boom. Okay. Uh, so I'll tell you that 16 is enough. So roll me some damage. Uh, and then I'll describe what happens. <laughs> That's by doing that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> the chanting rises once more. Uh, a selection of apparitions appear in the room around you. <laughs> Let me just move them to the right layer. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> apparitions of uh, hooded figures wearing dark robes, tattered and stained with blood, appear around you. The chanting rises once more. Uh, each one resembles a black-robed figure holding a torch, but the torch's fire is black and seems to draw light into it instead of giving light away. The, the, the light in the room is actually sucked away by the appearance of these figures. Um, Although I don't think that that will only affect Grimar, um, but you have your torch, so you can still you can still see. Um, where you would expect to see faces underneath their robes, there is nothing, just an empty void. Uh, and the chanting begins: "One must die, one must die, food for Walter, one must die." Oh uh, and then Baby Walter will make his appearance. I don't know, baby water. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a handsome young man, isn't he? <laughs> so this figure, uh, what the reason that you you couldn't determine uh, what in the, in the pile was the figure is because a lot of that rotting meat melded so seamlessly into this grisly, horrible figure that you see rising up out of the trash mound before you now. It is a mess of meat, mouths, eyes, and like, teeth. Um, it it squeals in pain much like a baby's cry uh, as it rises up uh, part of its fe- flesh singed by the firebolt and immediately it starts barreling towards you with several of its mouths open and slathering. Uh, and we should roll initiative. It's um, it's got fifteen sets of teeth that I can see. Just saying. <laughs> yes. I don't believe the baby's got a two, and I haven't beaten it. Right. So at, this, at this point, Ed, can I use my health potion to get myself back into 
So we're in initiative now, so you have to do it on your turn. Okay. How did um, you two get zero? No, I, I hadn't opened it yet, so I've got to add their stuff in now. Uh, has someone rolled for Snorri? No. no. Well, I didn't mean it. <clears throat> I actually rolled again. You say you're going to control Snorri? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, yeah. I've just rolled it for him. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Like, <laughs> someone has. I got him. I got him a four. I accidentally rolled again, so I went twenty down to eight. Should I take? Still take the twenty? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, so Drake, you're the first to respond as you see this horrendous creature rise up uh, and begin Mine's barreling towards your party. Dead. Sorry. Mine's not appeared. Oh yeah. Uh, How do I get it to go on the thing? You have to click your token, but what will you roll? I'll add it now. Uh, I got five. Okay. So, Drake, what would you like to do? <laughs> so, where's Reese, it? Uh, Reese, it's a stone yeah. room with water in it and a load of hooded ghosts. There's not a lot you can set fire to. Hint, hint. Yeah. That's it then. <laughs> that saw it for me. Gonna do burning hands and burn this place down. <clears throat> so where are you aiming burning hands at? Um, can I like do you just start spinning around in circles? <laughs> 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 and let's just focus on like the the baby with the, the apparitions aren't yeah. hey, the apparitions aren't doing anything at the minute, are they? They're just chanting. They, at the yeah. moment, they're just chanting. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll aim it at um, <laughs> Walter. Yeah, I'll aim it at Walter. So, what's the range on Burning Hands? Because I think it's pretty short. You'd need to move closer if you wanted to do that. Let's have a look. Fifteen foot. Yeah, so I think. So, a fifteen foot cone would be uh, like that. Oh, you, why can't you see that? I can oh, see it. Yeah, oh, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just you're not close to burning hands. Okay, so if I moved to there... But you can only move an action, isn't it? Move is a movement action. Oh, okay. Move an action. I can still attack afterwards. Okay, so what's that? Five. That can should I just, just point reach, out, right? that um, my, my spell's bigger than your spell. I can do 120 foot. Just saying, mine's bigger than yours. Uh, but you can only hit one person with yours, right? I can hear everybody. <laughs> no way, sometimes I'm trying to big myself up. <laughs> You're just there to knock me back down. <laughs> so yeah, I'll do burning hands and aim it at Walter. Okay, so I must make a dexterity saving throw. See if you hit it. Uh, it fails, so it takes the full damage. Oh! You, you don't need to make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> oh, my bad. You're the one, you're the one <laughs> fighting. <laughs> 3d6, wow. So you, it takes nine fire damage from you. It continues yeah. to squeal as fire hits it. Um, and not only that, when fire hits it, um, you're doing more damage to it than you think you should. Like, you, you've burned many a thing in your life. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're a troubled child who made a pact of a devil. It's only natural, um, but I just yeah, burn it, this, things up. yeah, this stuff is falling off of Walter uh, as this fire touches it. Like it is uh, particularly affected by by fire. That's good to know. Um, so end of your turn. Damage off it. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes, that would be the end of my turn. Grima. All right, so I'm gonna. Chug the health potion, which is 2d4 plus 2. Six, so 8. So I regain 8 points of health. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Um, where's my health now? Or do you change that? Uh, you can just click on your token uh, and in the green bubble where it says 9, just click in there. And type pro, uh, type plus eight. Enter. It will do the math for you. Oh, Seventeen. 
Okay. It's not right. There we go. All right. So, do I get? Does that count as a move then, or is it just something uh, that I can do before? I always forget if taking a potion is an action or not. Give me one second. We can see the actions in combat handout. So action would be use an object. Would that be use a potion or something? Magic yeah, I think or... you're taking the you're taking the use an object um, action. Okay, so that'll be your attack. That will be my attack. Unless you have an action surge or something. Um, yeah, but. I wouldn't want to waste it at this point where I'm so far away. Mm. Um, so do I get a movement still on this or not? Yeah, your movement action is separate, so you can still move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. 30 feet. OK, is that the end of your turn? Yeah, that is the end of my turn. <laughs> So we know the fire does it, so I'm going to basically do another. It's Kavir's turn now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm am gonna, in this well, game. I'm going to wait patiently. <clears throat> um, is he is he actually on fire? Like from he's, the... he's not on fire. He's not still taking damage, but uh, it it shrieked and seemed to be. Oh more burned than it should have been by the fire damage that it took. None of his trash pile is on fire? No. Have I got any idea what the hell this thing is? It just, other than a big turd with mammals? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could um, you could roll something to see if you know. Uh, probably something like religion or... Would that, would that be my action? No, that would be, that'd be free. That, that's just you looking and trying to remember something. It would be it would be an action if you were doing something more physical that would take up more of your time. So where's religion? Religion. Oh, very good. I wish I'd rolled waited and rolled that on my attack. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you think uh, you have heard stories of. Uh, creatures who suffer from the same affliction um, but have never been allowed to grow this big uh, because normally in civilized society things like this would be dealt with <laughs> before they could have a chance to get this pig um, but basically you you recall an obscure piece of law uh, that cultists would sometimes pray to uh, nondescript dark powers um, <laughs> who would uh, grant an unlife to an infant child in exchange for sacrifice. Um, and that this unlife made them untethered from the natural laws of reality uh, and granted them extreme power uh, and made them a sort of semi controllable, semi sentient, tame beast in the employ of the cultists that the cultists could use to attack or defend themselves from their enemies. Uh, it's a particularly heinous practice. Yeah. And not one practiced very often. Uh, do I know anything about what these things might be vulnerable to? Or, or like, you know, if it, um, are they, are they, because it was a religion thing. Um, they... Yeah, <clears throat> so because they are an unholy creature, um, they're sort of, they're, not undead, but they're similar to undead, and they take extra damage uh, from uh, fire and radiant because they they are particularly harmed by divine light. Um, but you don't think cold damage would be a very good, good way about going about it. But not silver. That probably wouldn't have an effect though. Okay. All right. Um... In which case, I've seen you two throw a lot of fire about. Do I know what spells they've got? Like, do, do, do you have more fire spells? 
Well, it's, it, it, it's what you can do to damage it, Dave. No, but I want to know, do they mine's have a, mine's, mine's a cantrip, so I can use it as, as often as I like. Um, mine was an actual spell, but I have two, two level two, so I only have one left. Are they fire mm. spells? Uh, is, yeah. Burning I've Hands got, is a fire spell, yeah. My firebolt is a cantrip, I can use it as often as I like. Okay, the Hail Mary. <laughs> um, I'm going to go up to there and chuck one of my two um, flasks of oil. Oh. I oh. <laughs> nice. I know what's coming in a minute. Okay, uh, I'm going to make you roll for that because it's a, he's a huge target. Um, there's no chance you're going to miss. So you just take this flask of oil, overhand it. Um, <clears throat> it smashes against Walter's head uh, and douses the front of it with oil. So it doesn't take any damage from that. No, it'll take one damage. I'll give you one damage for that. He blinks it out of his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> yeah, it, it's now doused in oil. It doesn't seem very happy about it. Okay, so on my go. It fixes just... some of its eyes on you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my go now? Yeah. So I'm going to cast Ray of Frost. <laughs> <laughs> you would just to be a prick, wouldn't you? <laughs> Do you know what's really annoying? I really want to use a different spell, but I can't now. Right, so there we go. Firebolt is in the house. Oh, yes. Nailed him. Oh, I still had advantage on, sorry. That's fine. I was actually going to say, uh, because he's doused it in oil, you can roll with advantage, but you went ahead and rolled with advantage anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, give me some damage for the fireball. Kaboom. I'm feeling lucky here, guys. Yes. Seven. Not bad, nice. not bad. Seems like I only get up to ten. Uh, and Dave, I want you to roll me uh, 2d6. Ooh. Ooh. Is this you, sorry, just as a, as a side head, is this you kind of being a proper dungeon master now, making stuff as you go along? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. I yeah. just want to know. There's, no, there's nothing in here about what to do when they throw flasks of oil at it. <laughs> <laughs> How have you, you've rolled 2d6 and it's given me three dice results. I I don't know. I, I looked on the thing which looks like the dice icon and then I went d6 and I clicked two. Do, uh, do it for me again. I can't even see that. I can't see it either. Yeah, you're sending it directly to me somehow. I don't know why you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see him now. He's rolled two sixes, Ed. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. don't know what's happened. You How have you it? done this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> where, you, where you roll the dice, is you click, have you clicked the GM button? I haven't clicked any oh. button other than D6. Yeah, the top button. left where it says GM, is that, is that blue? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, un unclick that and then roll two d six. How is it thirteen? You've also clicked an. Um, you've also clicked. Just unclick anything that's blue at the top bar, Dave. <laughs> okay. Well, just click the thing honestly, that you want to do something. I haven't. <laughs> I honestly haven't pressed any of those. I don't. <laughs> But I'll take 13, I mean... <laughs> you can't have 13 on two six-sided dice, Dave. You can when you're Dave. <laughs> Yay! Right, that's one dice. <laughs> <laughs> not great, but not nothing. So is he actively on fire now, like continuously burning? Or no, so the that those two d six is what I had you roll for the extra damage that is caused when this thing explodes. So it's drenched in fresh oil. The firebolt does its damage to it, and then uh, it, it you, there's just this eruption. A pillar of flame uh, bursts out of it, um, and it, there's squealing and flailing and writhing, uh, and it's kicking water everywhere. Uh, and there's this horrible smell in the air, like someone's burning like rot rotting flesh um but it really did not seem to like that <laughs> so good job uh, my four are you doing anything else in your turn no. it's not dead now no nothing else 
Snorri? So, Ben, do you want to roll for Snorri? Um, yeah, where is he? He's hiding. So what, what, what did he do? Just a couple of... Run up a couple of axes, do we reckon? Where I feel like that's really? what he would do. Yeah. He has a short bow, but I haven't seen him use it yet. No, so, I don't think he believes I him. reckon maybe he's a, an axe man. I, I think secretly he wants to be a fighter. <laughs> Um, he can do some sort of special. Thing, oh, hunter's but, mark. Yeah. Hunter's mark. But I don't know if that's instead of his attack. No, it's as well as because it's only a bonus action. So, you know, he'd probably do that because this thing's horrendous. To be honest with you, if he's got that longbow, he should use that because he damage is a one d eight rather than on the hand axe is a one d six. He can do two attacks with the hand axes, can he? Yeah. He's got yeah. two hand axes. Okay, crack on. Right. So he's I mean, got a hunt, Hunter's Mark. Yeah, so you don't have to roll for Hunter's Mark. So if he, if you hit it, you'll just do two extra damage now. Alright. And then, so... So 15 is a hit. And second one? Or do yeah, I and 21. To... So roll yeah. the damage for the first one. So, so it's nine from the hunter's mark. Yeah. Uh, and then damage for the second one, and roll what? me another d6 for hunter's mark that he'll get on top of it. Ooh, wow. Nice. And Nineteen damage. The beast. Oh, have you noticed he's always at his most effective when he's not here? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I killed someone when I wasn't there because Ed was rolling for me. I don't know. I'm rolling for him. Uh, okay, yeah. it is baby Walter's turn, and he is he not, not best pleased. No, he's not. He is last. Um, <clears throat> Walter is not picky enough about his food, uh, and if food wanders into his mouth, that's all the better. So he slams the huge gelatinous mass of its body into Snorri twice. Oh! <laughs> so ten, I'm guessing, is a miss on Snorri. Um, where are we? Yes. What his? Uh, we go and armor yeah, class is fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one misses. Second one, thirteen. So he misses twice. Yeah. Snorri is just too quick for the the slow lumbering, like blob of creature that he is and he manages to deftly nip out of the way of the strikes of these big pseudopod tentacles that are coming down on him trying to rake him with teeth um, and it's Drake's turn thank goodness he missed him <laughs> go on Drake get the kill I don't know whether to go back in for my burning hands or actually use Eldritch Blast and then actually saved the burning hands for another time. Right, fire, fire burn, fire kills. Yeah. If that thing hits one of us, there won't be another time. <laughs> well, this is why we need to burn him. Fire works, kill it. Yeah, just don't save for later. Live for today, just live for do it now. Okay. Uh, burning hands, straight at him. Straight at Walter. Okay, I notice you haven't moved before you've rolled. So you are engulfing Snorri in fire. <laughs> I'm sure right. you're aware of that. <laughs> Let me, if I move to the other side of Grandma. No, because you're doing a cone. The cone's going to get yeah, you. Yeah, you're going to do it. You're doing a cone. The only way that you you would not <laughs> hit him is if you stood next to him. Okay, I'll stand next to him. <laughs> okay. This is the last time I'm going to be friendly about reminding you of that. <laughs> the next time I'm just going to let you incinerate Snorri. <laughs> Please. Okay, so Please, uh, is, it safe? Is, it, is it safe with your character having burning hands? <laughs> Probably not, no, because I will literally <laughs> burn anything and everything. So, so he did fail his same throw, so he's going to take full damage. Um, yeah, more and squealing. The sound of a baby screaming, basically. Yeah, it's extremely unpleasant to listen to, as is the smell of roasting mm. trash meat that is wafting gently across the entire room. Um, Go on, Reese, have him. 
he's good. He's still up. He's still kicking. He doesn't look any more debilitated or anything. How much damage? It's hard take? to tell with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't rolled his damage yet, has he? Yeah, he rolled eleven. He rolled the damage before uh, he, I told yeah, him whether he'd hit. Yeah. Uh, Grimer, your turn. All right. So I'm gonna move up. Is that gonna get me within arm's reach of him, as it were, with these two in the way? So I'm say I'm gonna say that because you're sort of there's that bit bit of wall in front of you. Um, you're going to have to sort of swing around and sort of try and stab it around the corner of the wall. So if you want to attack like that, you can with disadvantage. Or can I kick Snorri out of the way? <laughs> um, or, well, it's, I know it doesn't work in, in this, but surely like, I can stand over the two of them. Quite that's over true. Them, but I know it doesn't work that way. We can't stand over each other. Yeah, because then, be, <clears throat> then you'll be five foot away. Your arms aren't long enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you can move through an allied space as long as you don't end there. So it's enough for you to sort of barge into Snorri's space, stab, and then move back to where you were before. Yeah, or I'll just jump in there with... You can't end your space on this. I mean, you can, but it means that you've been eaten. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You, you can attack without advantage. Uh, without disadvantage. Right. Okay, can, you have, can you have like an interaction? The interaction to be like she picks Snorri up and just move him out of the way. Yeah, you you could you could forcibly move someone. Um, it's called a shove, uh, or or you can grapple and sort of drag people, but it takes your action to do it. So oh, you so won't be able to we... attack. Okay, that's fine. All right. So this time I'll use action surge. That's the first one. Yep, 14 is a hit. And then second one. And then... Okay. So those are both my actions. Okay. And then you, uh, so you pierce your longsword. What, what do you have? It's not a longsword, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, sword. it is a longsword, yeah. You pierce your longsword twice quick succession stiletto style into this hulking mass of body um, and on the second one you must have punctured something important you don't know what the inside of this thing looks like but you must have, have pierced its evil gland or something um, with a squeal again like the sound of a of a, a absolutely distraught child um, it it gives up the ghost uh, it goes limp on the end of your sword and collapses into a quivering mound of of flesh. Um, and as you do, all of these shadow-like figures around the room begin to wail in absolute uh, terror and frustration that their their prized son, the the child of their cult, has been slain. Um, and one by one, they fade into the darkness that they've created. They become one with the shadow and disappear from sight. Nice. Well done, Grimar. Well done. Although, I think Kavir technically gets that kill. Why? For what I thought was some excellent decision making. That was good. If you didn't have, or if you didn't already have inspiration, I would have given you inspiration again. I, I spent it. Oh, we'll have inspiration then. Thank you. <laughs> for, for, for being smart. <laughs> okay, so they've all disappeared as well now, have they? Yes, and the creature that was uh, Baby Walter once upon a time has now died. Uh, everyone in the party gets 360 points of experience. It's a shame from... Pete doesn't get that because he wasn't here. Ah, he shame. gets it. <laughs> he gets it. How many was it, sorry? 360. So, so Kavir is definitely leveled up now because it's only 300 to the second level. <laughs> so you've leveled up and then some. 780. Yeah. I think it's 900 for the next level. Oh, so close. So I'm going to 
So um, I suppose the best thing for us to do now is, I know Kavir can level up. Is, is the right thing for Kavir to level up now before we move or finish doing what we're doing and then do it after the session? I think, I think, I think finish up what we're doing. Yeah, normally what I say is um, level up with a rest. So a short rest or a long rest, it doesn't matter which. Yeah. So all we've got left in here now is that secret door. I suppose I suppose Kabir wants to have a rummage around in that nest to see if there's anything valuable in there. Yeah, we need to have a quick loot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not I mean, much in there. <laughs> there's nothing on baby water or anything like that, is there? Well, you might have some fillings, gold fillings. Got yeah. a lot of teeth. Nothing in that <laughs> trash pile it is. Uh, no, you search through and there's nothing valuable in there. It's just wreckage. Yeah. It's just trash. Uh, however, in the moments after the fight, as you are... I was going to say tending to your wounds, but Walter didn't actually touch any of you <laughs> during that entire thing. So <laughs> as you catch at your breath, um, you feel a rumble uh, like an earthquake. And part of the wall to the north of the this area uh, it splinters um, like a, a crack forms in it uh, as if the very foundations of this building are tearing apart and you hear this low level rumbling sound above you uh, and you get the impression that maybe the house didn't like that okay so mm. we're gonna leg it pretty good yeah, as fast we can Probably yeah, Bia, I think we're going to make an executive decision and say, you're not looting anything, we're going to run. Ah, <sighs> oh, we need you, Grimeoff. Oh, we need to get that secret door open first, I think, because the gate's shut, isn't it? It is shut again, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to carry out an investigation on that wall, see if I can find out how to open it. So now that you know it's here, uh, it's just simply a matter of pressing hard enough against it. It's stiff on its hinges, but it does open. Uh, and it opens up into this prison area on the other side. Okay. So we've gone in there again. Who moved mm -hmm. me in there? <laughs> I moved you in first. I'll go, yeah, I'll go first, don't worry. <laughs> right, so we, are we literally just straight out no stopping the house is falling down we've got to just get out do we yeah. how do we how do we do that Ed? how do we get out quick we so if, if you guys out. just want to leave then just tell me yeah um, we don't you don't need to like maneuver yourself through all the corridors and everything okay. um uh, but, I, I i need when when we get to the ground floor right i need to make a very quick decision as to whether the house is going to imminently collapse or whether i've got a chance to pick up some of that crystal Okay. Uh, so what I'll tell you is, um, so I, you're not. I'm guessing you're not pausing for anything other than that. We're you're just, just the, we're, trying to get yeah. out of the the dungeon. We're just stopped like, on the ground floor by the lounge area, yeah. so that Kavir can go and pilfer. Okay. So I'll tell you that time. you you run, retrace your your steps back to the entrance to the dungeon, back up the spiral staircase. As you do, uh, <clears throat> the the shaking around you is getting worse and worse, especially the higher you go up in the building. Um, and when you step out of the dungeon and into the the attic level of the house, yeah. everything around you looks about three or four hundred years later. The wood is rotting. The paint has chipped off of the walls. The, the sheets that were covering the uh, the furniture has like been eaten apart by insects and is is molding. Um, everything just looks way, way worse. Like all of a sudden, all of the life and energy of this house has been sucked out, uh, and you're seeing the the true decay that this building was suffering from. So there's um, some sort of magic curse on it, making it look more than it was. As you get out uh, of the attic down the stairs, it's the same thing. Uh, whereas before the house was getting slowly worse and worse as you ascended it and then at its absolute worst at the very the dungeon the bottom floor where these strange rituals seems to have taken place um now the entire house is just a complete wreck there are there's plaster just ripped off of the wall you can see exp exposed um <coughs> exposed timber and stuff like that um 
yeah, you get down to the ground level. You know, you know, Dave, this house isn't long for the world. It's coming down, and it's coming down now. Okay, it's time to time to get out there. Yeah. So we're all out on the street. Okay. You exit the house. Uh, when you get out there, um, <clears throat> the the apparitions of Rose and Thorn. Uh, so not the ghosts of the children, these other apparitions that the Rose said the house used to lure you in, um, they remain there and all they do is watch you silently and expressionlessly as you uh, all run out of the house and pause to catch your breath as turning around, the house, like it's imploding, just begins to crumble in on itself. Brickwork falling apart, and smashing clouds of dust and debris, choking your your lungs and making your you have to cover your eyes to prevent any damage. And when you look again, those those two children are gone, uh, and the house is just a complete wreck. In stark contrast to the intact houses to the left and right, um, it is is just disappeared. Uh, and as you are standing there. Regarding this, you hear the sound of a squeaky wheel, some sort of wooden wheel bobbing up and down on the cobblestones. Uh, and looking around you, you see a figure. Uh, this ancient old crone, this ancient looking woman, uh, pushing a rickety pie cart la laden with pastries. And she goes, <laughs> Hello, dearies! You must be new. No one goes in that house anymore. <laughs> Ed, it's uncanny. Yeah, I've, I've transferred you there, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit Monty Python at the, be a little bit Monty Python at the beginning, but, but top. I can top smell our pastries. Okay, so we need. Okay, I'll talk to her. Yeah. Um, hello, who are you? Ah, oh, I'm Morgantha, lovely. I'm you just a simple pie seller. Would you like one? It's only a silver piece, it'll fill you up. What's in them? They're yeah, piggy pies. Oh, I'm vegetarian, Matt. I'm vegetarian, love. She looks at you like you farted at her. Like, she's <laughs> uh, utterly offended by that. <laughs> Anybody else want a pie? Lovely piggy pies. Lovely and fat and juicy they were. I'll take raise a the, piggy Raise pie. them myself. Oh, Grimar's having one. I'll have a piggy pie. I think I'll, I'll pass on that. However long. Kavir, fancy a piggy pie? Uh, I'll buy one. Okay. So they're a silver piece. Um, there's 10 silver and a gold. So update your inventory. Um, and you each gain a piggy pie. Nice. Uh, which, shockingly enough, looks like a perfectly delicious pie. has a golden brown crust. Uh, it's in a... Uh, <clears throat> like... It, it's in this tin uh, that seems to come with it. That's probably why it's so expensive. Uh, there's, it's not, you know, it's not recyclable or anything. They don't have that. Um, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it looks lovely. It's pretty big and pretty dense. You think that you could probably eat off this for you know a couple of meals? And she goes, "Thank you, luxury, lovely darlings." <laughs> You're welcome. So there's nothing wrong with these pies. Is that what we're saying? I didn't say I was eating it. <laughs> I said I was going to buy one. I'm going to um, wait until Peter is hungry and just offer it to him. <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep on using Peter as, <laughs> as a guinea pig because he's not here. <laughs> oh, hey, there, there's the rules. He's not here to defend himself. Yeah. I um. <laughs> I'm gonna move you over. So, to... do we need to take a rest? Does anybody need a rest? Look, yeah. Before we do that, um, I'm gonna ask her about the town. Like, it, what, what, can you tell us? We're, we're new here. Can you tell us? Can you tell us anything about the? 
Oh, it's obvious you're new here, darling, because you went in the Durst house. <laughs> all the newbies go in the fucking Durst house. Get some all! That thing's rebuilt itself more times. If I had a penny, oh, I'd be rich. <laughs> People not tried burning it down or anything like that? Oh aye, they've burned it. They burned it, barred it up, but it fixes itself, darling. This time next week it'll be standing there again, and them two creepy old little children be luring people like you inside. Oh dear. Mm. There's something not right about that house. I'm an expert, I've decided. Yeah. <sighs> we never found the mother and father, did we? I, so we, um, you could have, but you didn't go there. So if we come back in a week, um, we we'll just try it all again. <laughs> yeah. Farm it. What's that? <laughs> farm rare lo- farm rare drops. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have known if we'd found uh, Mr. Durst because he would have had his baseball cap on backwards. I was waiting. <laughs> I was like, literally, I was this whole time, I've been like, why hasn't I mentioned it? I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> so, are, are we going to, what are we going to do? Are we going to take a rest? Short rest? Long rest? I think Reese wants to replenish some of his spell slots. I'm assuming it'll take a long rest to do two spells, right? A short yeah. rest or one? And no, it, it's a, a long rest. To, oh, sorry, no. You're a warlock, aren't you? Uh, yeah. For warlocks, you get all your spell slots back on a short rest. Oh, that's how I can do it. For wizards rest. or our clerics, they get all their spell slots back on a long rest. But okay, I'll do short they rest. They can then. cast a lot more spells than you. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've got two spell slots left. I've used one. I used one last time round. So I've still got two spell slots left, so I'm happy to take a short rest. Yeah. Right, we'll take a short rest. I mean, we need to roll a dice. I mean, no what, just in the middle of the street? Um, oh, we've got a map of the village. Sit down. <laughs> just sit down so I've, I've shared you a map of the town, um, and I've taken the liberty of any interesting landmarks, I've put a question mark on them, uh, so you can know that there's something worth investigating. Because uh, sometimes players, I think, get a little um, overwhelmed with all the all the buildings that are nothing <laughs> and they don't know what to explore um, mm. uh, but if if your party is discussing taking a rest um, Morgantha uh, will say uh, <clears throat> there's a tavern just down the road you know get okay, yourself a table and a drink say no more we're off for a beer yeah tavern oh yeah definitely tavern oh, actually is there um, much here Morgantha is there an orphanage in the village uh, she laughs <laughs> and says, "No. Okay. Why would there be an orphanage? Who just, wants more mouths to feed?" Just ask. Can I ask for, whether uh, there's any? Can I ask if there's any shops who might like to have a sideline in sex toys? <laughs> uh, she says. Contract. She says, "There's Bill Drasts. He's got oh. a, he's got a general store, but." You better be rich if you want a shop there. Build dress, right? Let's go to the tavern, gents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's go so, she, nice so she'll give you she'll give you directions. It's this large uh, house here. That I'm pinging. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you as you depart from Wagantha, she continues to hobble down the street with her wooden wheel knocking against every cobblestone. Uh, humming some god awful dirge, uh, and uh, she says, "Thank you, lovelies. Enjoy the piggy pies." Uh, and disappears into the mists, which are back. You had a brief respite inside this house from these cloying, overwhelming, uh, claustrophobic mists, but they it, it, they are back in full force. They're definitely not magical mists. I mean, they. You have you done anything like detect magic to look at them? Uh, yeah, um, uh, I think my four tried. So, the you think probably the mists themselves are mundane, but whatever's causing them is probably magical. 
Because it's I'm, not it's not natural to have this much mist. Yeah, that's that was what my, uh, both I and my character I think would have inferred. It's, yeah. like, it's like they weren't there. Now they're there. No, they weren't there. Now they're there. <laughs> Right, so we're going to make our way through the mists to the tavern. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just move that. You are here. Uh, I'm going to say... I have to say, that's the least D&D thing I've seen so far. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it would be funny. <laughs> I like it. It's just the least D&D thing. Okay. Uh, I'll say you get to here. Uh when you hear a sound coming down this alleyway um this excruciatingly loud uh, screech uh, of a woman crying uh not crying in panic or pain uh but more like the 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 wail of someone who is extremely uh despairing and sad um it's up to you whether you go not not my problem after the haunted house <laughs> and go and carry on um but on the your right hand side now you can see this tavern um it has a a sign swinging on a rusty chain outside with a picture of grapes in a bowl uh and <clears throat> the text uh, of the tavern name says the uh, blood of the vine tavern but someone has scratched out of and written on on so it reads blood on the vine tavern well I'm inflexible in my thinking I decided to go to the tavern that's where I want to go that's what my character is telling me should we still head to the tavern then? Well, no, I mean, my, this, this is where we, you know, clash, because... Snorri would go and investigate, wouldn't he? Because Snorri likes to go and see what's going on so he can have a fight. Grandma <coughs> has to do the right thing. Grandma would go with Snorri. Yeah. Yeah. Kavir? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the, the, the two fighter types, because... There might be some loot. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to grumble and moan, and I'm going to say, look, this mist is the wrong sign. We should be getting indoors. We shouldn't be outside. But I'll begrudgingly follow, and I'm, I'm grumpy. I'm, st I'm stropping. I'm having a strop. Okay. So I'm going to hang at the back and just kind of yeah. mutter to myself. Well, I ain't going to the tavern by myself, so <laughs> I'll follow along. Okay, so... Uh, after a brief discussion, you guys head down this alley until you get to here. Um, if I die because sob... of this, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. A moaning oh, sob floats through the still grey streets, colouring your thoughts with sadness. They, fl they flow from a two-story townhouse, uh, the, door, the front door of which is actually resting ajar. Uh, and that strikes you as odd because all of the other buildings that you've passed have had their windows boarded um, and their doors heavily locked. Uh, clearly the residents of this village. Uh, a couple of faces you have seen peeking out anxiously from windows as you've walked through the streets. Uh, clearly untrustworthy of strangers in their midst. Um, that they are, they are shut up and ready for danger. Whereas the front door of this house swings ajar without a care in the world. And that's where the sovereign's coming from. Yeah. Okay. So me and Snorri will just head straight in and try and find the source of the sovereign. Okay. So are we gonna stay outside the other three? Guard the entrance? There's pretty not much to uh, guard from, is there? Everything's going to be inside. Well, I think this is not, I think this is where we let them two go off and we stay. <clears throat> I, I think I'm going to follow them in just just to make sure that there was no um, valuables know. left unstolen. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kavir, you're really starting to piss me off now. 
I could, I could just see like my four outside, like kicking stones, like and muttering and just sort of like shuffling around. You know, whilst everyone else sort of like slowly makes their way into the house. And obviously, <laughs> I follow. Okay. Because although although I've got although I've got you know the mouth, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just a little gnome who's scared. So. Let's say we'll go inside then. I will talk. Okay. Um, you. So I'm going to say, I'm, I'm assuming Grimar's leading the way. Um, oh, possibly yeah. sorry as well that Peter's not here, so Grimar's going to be taking the lead on this one. Um, you push open the front door. Uh, the inside of this townhouse is dark, dingy. Uh, it is clean uh, but everything is in poor repair clearly um the chairs are moth-eaten and patchwork uh the decorations have are, have been so heavily stained by the soot and smoke of the fireplace and candlelight uh, that you can barely see what is within the frame anymore um you hear the the sound of this wailing sob coming from upstairs and as you cross over the threshold uh, you hear the first legible word um, spoken which is this woman's voice that goes <laughs> Gertrude um, you think that the there's one flight of stairs you think that they would take you right up to where you can hear this voice you're just going to head up yeah just fly straight up with, you know that's okay. where the coming from um, <clears throat> opposite the upstairs, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, landing. Landing, thank you. Um, is a door uh, into a uh, fairly sparsely decorated room. Um, and lying in a, in a heap in the middle is this crying woman, um, probably you would estimate late 40s early 50s um she looks absolutely terrified when you cross the threshold uh she is cradling a uh, a malformed patchwork doll in her hands uh, but as soon as you enter the the crying stops as she's so shocked to see this giant of a man step into the room and Snorri who's barely visible behind your leg <laughs> do we uh, to fix the pipes do, do, yeah. <laughs> do, do we recognise this patchwork doll no no it's not similar to what the kids had before um, it is fairly similar actually but um, it's not di different enough that it's clearly distinct okay yeah what is it? Did you say she screamed before? Intruder. Gertruda. Gertruda. Yeah, a, a woman's name, Gertruda. Gertruda. So, I ask her, who's Gertruda? Uh, uh, she hesitates for a moment and sort of clutches her uh, <coughs> her collar in fear, and then quietly she says, "My daughter." Your daughter. My daughter. She's. She's missing. She's missing? When, when did you last see her? A week ago. A week ago? What are you doing? What's going on over there? It's Gertruda. Okay, but we're doing creepy houses. Oh, the last man, thing that... we need is a random hand appearing around the door. That's what we need for like the season finale. If I get killed on camera, <laughs> that'll really <laughs> rush up the horror vibes, right? Hey, that'll, um, get the, that'll get us subscribers <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she says, um, a week ago, she went missing. No one will help me look for her. Where did she go missing from? From here. From here? This is her room. I woke up in the morning and it was open. This in the front door. She, she must have been taken away. So she didn't leave her by herself, you know. Oh, no, she never would. She's mommy's little girl. 
can we have um, Kavir? Can I suggest that you do a little bit of a tip tappy around and see if you can find anything? Any any evidence of any wrongdoings? Yeah. And then can okay. I do? Um... Like, per- like perception check, would it be for, like to see if to see if she's telling the truth? Her name's Mad Mary. To, yeah, so to um, well, you don't know her name's Mad Mary. Yeah. <laughs> she's not, it's not hovering above her head. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you want to uh, roll to see if you can determine like motives or whether someone's lying or something like that, uh, then insight is what you need to roll. In sorry, insight or insight, yeah, because like that'll that'll give you like. Uh, an insight into the her motives and uh, <laughs> like body language and things like that. So, so like <laughs> yeah, so with an eight, um, you know, you think you think she's telling the truth. She like yeah. she you she, you don't detect any reason for her to lie. Um, uh, her name her name is actually Mary, not Mad Mary. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um. Uh, with an eight investigation, Dave, you don't find anything. But with that sixteen perception, um, like, are you sort of like kneeling down next to Mary so you can speak to her, for, like more face to face instead of looming over her? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so from down there, you you spy a tag uh, that is uh, attached to the doll, uh, sort of like a maker's mark, um, and you can't help but notice this. Uh, this <laughs> st- uh, stitched into this tag are the words is no fun is no blinsky is no fun is no blinsky yeah I'll paste that in so you can read it okay what's blinsky I would guess it's a toy maker well, can we ask her? Yeah, I, I assume that you did. And, and Mary, Mary nods and says, "Gadoff Blinsky, he made the doll. He lives over in Velaki. I got this for her on her tenth birthday." <laughs> I am. Uh, should we go for a pint? I encourage. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Should we go for a pint? <laughs> okay. So, so. Uh, um, so we like I, I say to her, you know, we we will we will look for your daughter. Thank you. Is, is Someone got... else dares. Okay. Has um, she got any friends that she might have gone yeah. to? See? Has, or has yeah. anybody been interested in Gertrude? She, she shakes her head and says, I wouldn't allow her have friends. It's too dangerous. How about um, the description? Or a, or a picture. Or a picture. Uh, <clears throat> she says, "We never got portraits made." She's, she's eighteen. She's, she's, she's just such a young girl. She's got brown hair. She's beautiful. She's eighteen. She's single. She's too old for you, Grimer. <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah, Is what it... happened with the? Uh, with the... <laughs> Girl in his head. Uh, so when when uh, Kavir makes that joke, uh, Grimar, you realise that you can't you can't hear her anymore. So oh. he's he's a little girl free, <laughs> <clears throat> free from the voices in my head. <laughs> At least one set. Could we ask him if Gertrude had any like places she used to visit regularly? Mary shakes her head and says, I never let her out. It's too dangerous out there. So we a place you go together? Occasionally we go to the shop together. But I've already looked there. Should, I, should we tell her that we'll investigate yeah. looking for her, but we'll go to the tavern to ask questions? Yeah, I think I think that's that's the sort of route I'm heading down. There's well. not there's nothing we can do here other than there's a girl missing. We haven't found any evidence of any misdemeanors. I say we go down the pub and start asking questions, see if any see if we can shake a few tail feathers. What is it? Dust down a few collars. 
Does, yeah. the, does the door look like it was forced inward or outward? What? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I thought, did you not say the door was busted? Was, was it's the, like, uh, uh, it's like working. it's poorly made, basically. Oh. Like, the, the proportions are all wrong. I didn't say it was door. inserted or removed from anywhere. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought, you said, I thought you said the door was busted in. Oh, the door? No, no, it was it was swinging ajar, but it wasn't broken. Oh, okay. I okay. thought, sorry, I thought you said the doll. Oh, sorry, what was it? <laughs> I was like, where did you remove the I doll was... from? I was like, hang on, what was inserted where? Was... Yeah, exactly, it was just my question. <laughs> it, was in, it was in Malibu, um, it was in Barbie's Malibu summer house, and it's been removed. <laughs> okay. Just point on my right. four where Kavir <laughs> wants the doll inserted. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're you. I think the place to look for a lost eighteen-year-old girl is probably the pub. Yeah. So we'll tell her. We'll we'll we'll, we'll help you look for her. We're going to go and ask some questions. We're going to start at the tavern. Okay. Um. She she will thrust the doll into your hands, Grimar. Okay. And say, take this. She'll know. She'll know that her mama's, her mama's talk to you if you have this. If you find her, bring her back to me. She's all I've got. Okay. This is the first item we've been handed as a group that Kabir hasn't shown any interest in. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, flip the the lady who's not called Mad Mary. Uh, a couple of silver and say get get yourself something good to eat and I've got one of these that you might want to have just to tide you over and I'll give her the pie <laughs> Aww, that's lovely because <laughs> you know I'm a caring kind of person and also if you bring a daughter back you know there might be more rewards to follow especially if I've been nice to her now yeah because their house looks like they've got a few gold coins to spend <laughs> <laughs> they'll have some. Okay, so we're off down the pub. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so she's still crying when you leave, uh, but she seems at least somewhat consoled by your promise to help look for her daughter. Uh, you can't hear her wailing in the street anymore. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure the door's shut properly as well when we leave, just as a sign. <laughs> Maybe bar it from the outside to stop her. Okay, you head over to the tavern. Um, a single shaft of light thrusts illumination into the main square, its brightness looking like a solid pillar of heavy in the heavy fog. Above the gaping doorway, a sign hangs precariously askew, proclaiming it to be the Blood on the Vine Tavern. And as you let yourself in through the front door, um, there is a hush in the tavern. But it's not the kind of hush where strangers have walked in and everyone stops talking. It's the kind of hush where they weren't even talking when you walked in. Uh, this is just us. It's a. It's. It's not happy hour at the Blood on the Vine Tavern. Let's put it that way. Um, there <clears throat> are are some some tables and a bar loosely populated by these grey-skinned and sort of gaunt looking villagers um, who eye you not suspiciously, but nervously, like you might do something terrible any second. Um, behind the bar is a heavy set uh, man who is just gazing into space uh, and rubbing a glass with a, a rag. Uh, rubbing it to the point where he may wear through the bottom of this class at some point. Uh, you, like, this class is is clean. You you can tell. Um, uh, other than that, there is a, a man sitting by himself on one table, um, drinking from a pint and looking at you with some interest. Um, he seems the most sort of cordial of the, the members here. He's not looking at you like he expects you to pull weapons and attack at any second. Um, and a group of colourfully dressed women, three women, uh, sitting in a corner, a corner table, um, chatting quietly amongst themselves. Uh, and you recognise from their clothes and the the decorations uh, that they are Vistani. Ah, oh, well, I'm their best mate. 
They're really friendly. Look, no, at, this, look at this! Look at this shit that we're in right now. Yeah. This is their fault. They haven't done anything directly to an, directly to annoy us, upset us, or hurt us. They wanted some help. They wanted some help. It, they are the reason we're in this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, can I just say one thing to you? This is Dungeons and Dragons. If we hadn't have followed them, we'd still be back at the original town, just drinking ale and eating, and that's not much of a video or much of a game. I, Dave, agree with you. Kavir <laughs> blames them for this shit. <laughs> right there. So, uh, fortunately, our tiefling rogue isn't our um, public relations officer. <laughs> He's in charge of acquisitions. <laughs> So, um, can I suggest that rather than overpowering people, we split into two groups, one of two and one of three, and we go and question different people about whether they know this girl. And also ask questions about the house. I mean, we're at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, or should we just go and find a table, order some food and drink, and have a short rest? I think we have the short rest. Short rest, there we go. Yeah. Because okay. uh, just uh, it is, it's like quarter past nine, and we're probably gonna head off into something else. So yeah, do you, do you want to do that, or will people have to stay on for a bit longer tonight? Honestly, I, I I'd be comfortable with stopping here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that short rest. Let's do a short rest first. We have to roll the dice, don't we? See whether we get attacked. Uh, not in a tavern. Okay. That's only if you're resting somewhere dangerous. Oh, okay. Tavern's not dangerous, Dave. I got that. <laughs> yeah okay yeah should we we call it here for the night yeah and uh you you've got some some npcs ready for role play next time we we pick up next week i need to level up and i need to ask you how much gold i should have had to start with okay <laughs> yeah, i'll help you with that afterwards <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right gg guys thank right, you very much yeah. thanks ed Cheers, Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you very much. Dudes, it's been a pleasure as always. Let's hope Pete can stay with us next time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just...